average of 15,760 fires occur every year in the city of Los Angeles, totaling a property loss of over $5 million. This is not unusual, however. Other cities have, in proportion to their size, the same ratio of fire and loss. The challenge that we of the firefighting and prevention branches of the department are constantly asked to meet is one of keeping this damage to a minimum. There are various ways of accomplishing this, education of the public, adequate equipment, and so on. But most important of all is the time and effort we devote to the training of our firemen. The fireman is put through an intensive program of training that is just as carefully scientific in its way as the business of crime detection and prevention is in its own field. Once the rookie becomes a fireman, there are chances of promotion all along the line for the intelligent and ambitious. And for those who have talent, there are other branches, such as the arson squad. We keep a careful record of the boys in the department, and when an opening for promotion comes along, but perhaps I can best illustrate my point by telling you about a young fellow named Joe Mark. It begins with a half million dollar fire in the wholesale district of Los Angeles. One of the buildings involved housed a wholesale fur company owned by a man named Payson, who claimed insurance on $50,000 worth of destroyed mink pelts. Joe Martin is the young fireman whose courage and ingenuity in bringing out those half-destroyed animal skins gave us the first clue that this fire was not as accidental as we had at first supposed. We learned later that these furs were rabbit and muskrat, two types of fur that were not on the inventory that Payson presented to the insurance company. One of the best men on the garrison detail was sent on the job, a man by the name of Bob Halloran. He was on the job hardly an hour, when he met with an accident that proved fatal to him. And we would have considered it as merely accidental had not the portfolio, which was as much a part of Bob as his right arm, proved to be missing. The insurance company, meanwhile, had begun its own investigation pending payment and had so far found nothing wrong. Nothing, that is, to give them a legal reason for withholding payment. And so for investigative purposes, we decided to ask the insurance company to hold off payment until we had time to make our own check. Come in. Oh, Joe, I've been waiting for you. Sit down. I guess you don't remember me. I sure do, sir. <laughs> you were pretty young. You drove the ladder wagon my father used to hang on to. He was a man to be proud of. But that isn't why I got you here, Joe, to talk about your dad or because of him. Understand that. There's an opening in the arson detail, and you've been highly recommended. Would you like to come with us? Would I? Uh, I hoped you'd say that. Now to get down to facts. This case actually began for us when you pulled those pelts out of that first door fire the other day. That fire didn't seem right to me. That's why I went in to take a look around. Now circumstances all point to the fact that Payson either had the fire set for him or set it himself. A check of our file shows that during the last few years a number of the large fire insurance payoffs have been through an underwriter agent by the name of Fender. Now that name Fender recurs again and again. And we believe that he also has a hand in the unloading of all the valuable goods that are supposed to be destroyed in those fires. If we can locate those goods, we'll have them right where we want them. A few weeks back, Payson had an unreported fire in his apartment and the insurance company paid off. My name is Joe Martin. So? I'm from the fire department. Mm, that's nice. But there's nothing on fire here. I know, but there was. That was quite some time ago. I'd like to ask a few questions for the department. Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be of much help. The Payson's know about that, and they're not here. Oh. Uh, who are you? The babysitter. Uh -huh. um, but when will the Payson's be back? In about an hour or two, I believe. Do you mind if I come in and wait? Well, I... I don't know as I should. Are you sure you're a fireman? Well, sure, I'm sure. No, I mean, can you prove it? Well, here's the uniform, the suspenders, the singed hair, and here are the credentials, all properly embossed and countersigned. 
All right, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Babysitter, huh? Disappointing, isn't it? No, not exactly. I always thought babysitters were either bobby soxers or old and fat. Please sit down. Thank you. So you don't think I qualify as a um, babysitter? Not so far. I suppose you do have to know how to handle kids, don't you? It helps sometimes, but I don't worry about that. You get a lot of experience after you've had 50 children of your own. 50, huh? 50? Yes, I'm a school teacher. Oh, that's better. Well, what are you doing babysitting? Well, if you read the newspapers, you know that a school teacher can always use extra money. Holy smoke, what is all this? Examination papers, I have to mark them. What subject did you major in? Everything but fifth grade grammar. U.S. history? That's for me. How about these for a starter? Are you sure that's enough? Junior, why aren't you in bed? Just getting a snack. A snack? Want some more? No, thanks. Well, are we a little too early? It looks cozy, doesn't it? He came to see you. You, dear? I didn't know you knew any firemen. It's all very simple, Mr. Payson. I came to ask you a few questions about that fire you had here a couple of weeks ago. But we filled out an insurance report. As a matter of fact, they've already paid off. Or our only concern is the fact that the fire wasn't reported. We'd like to know why. Such a little fire, we just put it out ourselves. <laughs> well, you should have reported it. We like to keep our files up to date. Where did I put that folder? On the table. Oh, thank you. Can I fix you a drink? No, thanks. I'm on duty. Oh. How was my little precious tonight, Jane? Well, he had a hard time getting to sleep, but he finally made it in spite of himself. You don't need me now, do you? No, ma'am. How did the fire start, Mr. Payson? I was fumbling around in the closet for a pair of shoes, and I must have knocked the end off my lighted cigarette. When did you first notice it? Well, about five minutes later. I was out here in the living room and smelled smoke, and by that time, the closet was ablaze. Mm -hmm. It says here that the fur coat that Mrs. Payson lost was valued at $3,500. Is that right? Uh, yes. But we only got 2400 Do you mind if I take a look at that closet? No, right this way. It's been painted and fixed up, though. Well, no, that's okay. Quite a handsome young fireman, isn't he? Is he? I hadn't noticed. Is that right? Yes. Oh, thank you. He didn't ask any questions about us, did he? No. And you say the door to that closet was closed all the time? Well, I didn't say. Actually, it was open. Had it been closed, the fire would hardly have had enough oxygen to blaze, would it? Yes, I guess you're right. Well, I guess that about does it. I'm ready any time you are, Mr. Payton. Oh, right away, Jane. I'm sorry I was delayed. Oh, uh, are you taking her home? Well, I usually do. Well, I could drop her off and save you some time. Do you mind? No. That is, if it isn't out of your way. Of course not. Well, thank you, Mr. Payton. Oh, don't mention it. I'm glad to have been of help. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see you again. All right. Good night. Fender, this is Payson. I thought you said everything was okay on that fur coat fire. Yeah, that's what you think. The fire department's just been here checking up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. There isn't going to be any trouble, is there? Oh, I hope not. Well, I knew we shouldn't have done that. Well, you knew I had to have the cash. Don't you dare blame me. Now, I'm not blaming you, honey. What's been done doesn't worry me as much as what's coming up. Well, this is perfect, Mr. Martin, and thank you very much. Can I carry that in for you? No, thanks. But 
It's rather late. Perhaps some other time. Well, that's encouraging. At least it'll be another time. Well, I didn't mean to. Don't tell me you do babysitting every night. No. How about tomorrow? Aren't you rushing it a bit? Well, I didn't mean in the morning. I meant tomorrow night. All right, if I don't get a call... Well, you'll get a call. You'll be babysitting with me tomorrow night. Sounds exciting. It's excitement you want. We'll find a nice, exciting place to sit. All right, Joe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh. <laughs> it's many a year since a handsome young man held me tight like this. Pardon me, Grandma, but duty calls. <laughs> Good night. Goodbye. Farming these days are much better looking than they used to be. The following morning, Joe was on deck bright and early for the second phase of our little scheme to draw Mr. Fender into the spotlight. Hello? Well, if it isn't the visiting fireman, what can we do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Fender. Oh, he's busy with somebody else at the moment. Frankly, this thing has me scared. I think they smell a rat, or to be more exact, I think they smell a couple of burned rabbit skins. They always snoop. That's part of their job. As far as I'm concerned, everything went off fine. Oh, but if they ever find that mink. All we have to do is let us sit in a warehouse till it cools off. I wish I'd never gotten into this. You don't have any other choice in the matter. Even if you found a market for those pelts, you couldn't have made enough cash to pay off your notes. You certainly make it sound easy. That's because it is easy. Well, I hope so. Fireman's here now. Don't worry about him. You go out this way. Do you want to see me? Why, yes. My name is Joe Martin. Come in. Sit down. What can I do for you? In making a routine checkup of our files, I came across an unreported fire at the home of uh, Thomas Payson. Well, that matter's been settled. The insurance company paid off. Yes, I know. The insurance report says that the fire started from a cigar ash in a closed closet. Now, Mr. Payson said it was a cigarette and the closet was open. I'd just like to get the straight of it, that's all. Now, look, you're making mountains out of molehills, my boy. I made out that insurance report myself. Payson called me on the phone and told me all about the damages. Now, I don't remember all the ifs, ands, or buts, cigars, cigarettes. What's the diff? Maybe Payson don't smoke. It makes a lot of difference whether or not that closet door was open or closed. Yeah. Now, look, I dictate to that stupid dame out there that it was a closed closet. Can I help it if she spells it like it's C-L-O-S-E-D? Maybe you're right. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring the matter up so you wouldn't make the same mistake in the future. After all, failure to report a fire is a legal offense, you know. Well, that's pretty decent of you, young fella. A nice man like Mr. Payson could stub his toe over a little thing like that and miss out on that big payoff he has coming up in the future. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Mr. Payson is as grateful as I am. Now, if there's any way in which we can show our gratitude. No, not at the moment. After all, it's only my duty to see that the citizen gets a fair break. It's a real pleasure dealing with you, Mr. Uh, what'd you say the name was? Martin. Joe Martin. I'll remember that, Joe. Please do. And anytime you need any um, technical help, you can reach me at engine house number 22. Thanks again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pete. See the guy who just left? Yeah. He's with engine company number 22. I want you to check on him. Find out all about him. What he does, where he hangs out, where he goes nights. What cooks? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out for myself. There's one thing certain. This guy's on to something. Mm. Everybody has lost something in his heart. Maybe this one can be bought if he doesn't come too high. If he does, he can be taken care of. Hmm.
the bait was beginning to get a nibble, as Joe soon found out. Everywhere he went for the next few weeks, there was our shadow. You won't believe this, but tonight's going to be the first time I've ever kissed a girl. Really? Then maybe you better come back after you've had a little more experience. Hey, where are you going? You don't want to sit out here and freeze, do you? You mean... Uh-huh. Tonight it's early. I'll be right with you. Would you like something to eat? No, thanks. Let's just sit down and enjoy some music, shall we? All right. Here alone? Well, Grandma! This is Joe Martin, the fireman I was telling you about. Oh, I know him. Bumped into him the other night. Grandma's been babysitting at the Payson. If I have a date, she sits. If she has a date, I sit. And it works out fine. Only I don't have so many dates. I dare say. Payson's got home early tonight, didn't they? Say, that man Payson, he's just a bundle of nerves. Why, when he came in tonight, he swore up and down to his missus that they'd been followed. No, I think he's... Grandma! Um, I'll bet you get to know quite a lot of people while you're babysitting, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> you ain't kidding, boy. <laughs> I could really go near a fall. If you want no anything, just ask me. <laughs> Please, darling, remember our code. <laughs> you come around some night when she's not around. Let's make that definite. Uh, say, he's nice. I like him. <laughs> uh, didn't you offer him any beer? No. You sit right down there again, and I'll rustle up some beer. I'm dying of thirst myself. You never told me you had a grandma. Most people do, don't they? We found that both sides were playing the same game. We had our man tagging Payson. They had one of their men tagging Joe. One afternoon, when Joe knew he was being followed, he gave the shadow a chance to move in. Bucks on Lady Jane in the fifth. Six eight three on the nose. There you are. Any dough on her? Uh, betting's light. Fifth at Santa Anita run yet? Not yet. It's coming up. Good. I got a hot tip on that one. So have I. Here, you want to look at the point? Yeah, thanks. Latest track guards from Santa Anita. What engine company are you with? 22. Owner post at Santa Anita. You've always been curious about firemen. Yeah? How come? Well, ever since I've been a kid, I wanted to be a fireman. Got all through my examinations and everything. But my figure kept me out. Passed the brain test, the strength test, and everything. It's been a great frustration in my life. You're nuts. You ought to consider yourself lucky they didn't suck you in. Sorry, but I still can't see it that way. The pay, brother, the pay. You can't bet the ponies on a narrow margin. Besides that, I got other worries. I'm gonna get married. They're off at Santa Anita. They got away clean with Sassafras, leading by half a lane. Come on, Lady Jane. By lane. You got Lady Jane? Jane? Third. Yeah. And hard tag. Avaricious, Rosa Sharon, Mousebait, Count 20, and High Flyer. Come on, you Lady Jane. It's Hard Tack moving up on the outside with Sassafras dropping back to second. Lady Jane third in the field springing out with two bits, Rosa Sharon, Avaricious, Count 20, Mousebait, and now trailing the field by four lengths is High Flyer. It's Lady Jane by length and a half, two bits and mouse bait neck and neck with Avaricious and Count 20 still in there driving hard. Lady oh, Jane baby. by length. And here comes High Flyer. It's Lady Jane and High Flyer. Lady Jane and High Flyer. Come on, baby. Come on, Lady Jane. Come on. Come on, baby.
could do for a win today. What to a pay a good price, too. How come you got Lady Jane? Just a hunch. It's my girl's name. Here's the official results. High flyer first, two bits second, mouse bait third. High flyer? Hey, Bud, you sure you got the right track? How do you like that? <laughs> that high flyer must have been running from the last race. It sure is a sucker's game. Well, better luck tomorrow. You leaving? Yeah, I got a date. Gonna be around tomorrow? Maybe. Tell you what, I got a hot tip in a second at Santa Anita tomorrow. You'll be here on time. I'll get your dough back and maybe more, okay? Okay. My name's Pete Prudy. I'm Joe Martin. Okay, Joe. Be seeing you around. See ya. Correction in the fifth race. The call was wrong. It's Lady Jane first, High Flyer second, Mouse Bait third. Well, I tell you, this guy is on our side. I've done nothing but study him for three weeks. He's fed up with his job, disgusted. We could sure use a guy like that. We'll see. Day after day, Pete fed Joe tips that seldom came through. Probably bum tips with a purpose. Going to the post for the second at Santa Anita. Howdy, Pete. Hiya, Joe. Second's just coming up. What's the goodie for today? Well, you know, I've been thinking, Joe, uh, you know, a guy that makes the kind of money that you do shouldn't be betting horses. Why not? Well, uh, say, I got an angle. Might let you in on it. Make yourself some real dough. Yeah? What is it? Tell me. Well, uh, forget about it for now. That tip in a second is shrinking violet. Shrinking violet, huh? Post time, Santa Anita. They're off. Natchez Bell broke badly. Holocaust now moving out front with King's men and neck behind, followed by Samarkand, Kiowa, Shrinking Violet, War Widow, Battle Axe, and Norther. It's Holocaust and King's men, Shrinking Violet now moving up strong. Shrinking Violet now moving out front with King's men and neck behind. It's a right! Certainly having a field day with this one. That's what comes of not listening to me. To you? Yeah. Hey, farm, come on. Uh-oh. I guess it's coming sooner than I thought. Good luck, kid. Let me know how you make out. Let's see what Shrinking Violet did in a second. What's he got that we ain't got? A hook and ladder. We gave Joe a fine drumhead trial, with the press properly informed to make sure that the public and Mr. Fender unanimously disapproved of Joe Martin. We have no precedent which gives us a moral right to discharge you. Therefore, we feel that the best procedure is to ask you for your resignation. Yeah? It's me, Joe Martin. Oh, just a minute, Joe. Hiya, boy. Howdy, How'd Pete. you make out? Well, I quit. I am now among the unemployed. Yeah? Well, pull up a soft chair. They find me five bucks. Hey, do you read all these books? Or are you just trying to impress people? No, I read them. I'm a great scholar. Any books on fire you haven't got? Well, not many. Like I said, I wanted to be a fireman bad when I was a kid. Now it's just a hobby. Sometimes, though, I can pick up a buck or two with all that knowledge. How come? Well, uh, say, how'd you like to go to a party tonight? A party? Yeah, a friend of mine's throwing it. Take your mind off some of your troubles. Might even meet some people could do you some good. All right, if I bring a date? Sure, by all means. All right, I'll be there. How's about a little drink? We sort of get ourselves in the mood. Excuse me. You know, a friend of mine makes this. Just a hobby with a made a lot of dough during Prohibition. He sends it over to me. Help yourself, Joe. Well, here's how. To happy days. <coughs> 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 
the old brewmaster lost his touch. There is a tavern in the town, oh, in the town, and there my true love sits him down, sits him down, and drinks his wine, and happy as can be, and never, never thinks of me. Hello, Mr. Finner. Remember me? Hiya, Joey. Hello, Pete. I'm the fireman who was in your office a couple of weeks ago. Glad to see you, Joe. Yeah, I told him to drop over. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Oh, uh, I want you to meet Miss Jennings. Jane, this is Mr. Fender. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, Jane. And this is another friend of mine, Pete Purdy. Oh, hi, you toots. I've heard a lot about you. You're that school teacher, ain't you? And don't make that crack about... About having a lot of class and no principal? <laughs> I'll get you a drink, honey. <laughs> I'll show you around. Here, Joe. Toss this over those grinning embers. Well, hello, Betty. How are you? Hi. Come on, Joey. I want you to meet some people. Stinker. see any reason why we couldn't work it out. I was just telling Jane that she's much too pretty to be a school teacher. Imagine wasting all this on little children. What do you think she should be? Well, I could sure use somebody like that around my office. You've already got a secretary. Betty? Uh-uh. I've outgrown her. I need somebody with more class. I'm afraid I don't have your kind of class, Mr. Bender. You have exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Don't you think we'd better be running along, Jane? Yes, I do. I I'd better tell Pete goodbye. You know, it's a funny thing. I came up here hoping something might turn up for me. Instead, my girl seems to be getting all the offers. There's room enough for everybody in this world, Joe. I might even be able to use you. Drop around to my office tomorrow. We'll talk it over. Okay. I was thinking I might be able to do you some good. I'm sure you can, Joe. Good night, Mr. Fender. I had a very interesting time. Good night, Jane. Good night, Mr. Fender. So long, Joe. Remember me, honey? The only girl in the world who understands you. Do you? <laughs> Tell you what, Joe. Pete has a little delivery job to do for me tonight. He needs a driver and he asks for you. Want to give him a hand? What's the job pay? Two hundred. For driving a car? Twenty-five is for driving the car, and the other hundred and seventy-five is to cover the risk. I see. You don't want it? Oh, I didn't say I didn't want it. But a fellow usually likes to know what he's getting into. You know, Joe, the boys who work for me don't ask questions. And that way they don't get any headaches worrying. What's good enough for Pete's good enough for me. Fine. You meet Pete at this address. Be there at 10 o'clock. Tom? Listen, Fender, I don't like it. Every move I make, I'm being watched. I'm sorry I ever got into a mess like this. Seeing how scared you are, I'm sorry myself. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take those furs off your hands. How do you mean? Well, it works out like this. I got you out of the red, didn't I? You got a nice, clean cash settlement from that insurance company? But I haven't got it yet. Just a matter of paperwork. Tell you what I'll do. You give me that warehouse receipt for those furs, and I'll tear up your promissory note. That's ridiculous. Those furs are worth four times what I owe you. That's my proposition. 
All right. A few minutes later, Joe made contact with Murph, the undercover man loaned to us by the police department. Cup of coffee. Payson's got the jitters. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I feel guilty about it. You'd better let him alone for a while and stick with me. I've got a job tonight and I might need your help. Go to meet tonight at the Midtown Garage at 10. That's all they'd tell me. Hello? Yes, yeah, speaking. A friend of mine, a Mr. Payson, said you did babysitting, Miss Jennings. Uh-huh, that's fine. Could you come up to my place tonight? Yes, I think so. What's the address, please? 4056 Dauphin Way, apartment 4 at 8 o'clock. Yes, I'll be there. Are you the gentleman that's looking for a babysitter? Lovely. Just for two? There it is on the map. A haberdashery store owned by a fellow named Hubble. Now we gotta be there at exactly, exactly 11.30. That way we must arouse at a patrol car. Then we have a car conveniently break down and store the fire engines. You've certainly got it worked out to the minute. That way you never go wrong. Now you got it straight what you gotta do? Sure, it's very simple. We'll tear up the address and swallow the pieces. Come on, let's go. Nervous, Joe? Not a bit. Well, you needn't be. When you're in the hands of Uncle Pete, everything works out right. Well, Joe, get as many of those woolens as you can. The jewelry, them suits, the more you get in, the bigger our cut. I'll take care of this. fixing the sprinkler system in the burglar alarm so the heat won't set them off. Good idea, Joe. on a slow fuse. By the time she goes whoosh, we're a mile away. We better get out of here. Yeah.
Train right at the next corner. It'll take us back to the garage. To the garage? We're gonna leave this stuff there? No, our job is done. A couple of other fellas take over. Let's get the stuff out of the car into the truck, huh? Well, I'm glad that's over. Now I've got time to see my girl. What, and miss all the fun? Fun? What fun? We've got to see our fire. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Besides, it'll be good experience for you. Come on. From what I've seen, this Fender's got a pretty big outfit. You bet he has. And every man's a specialist. He's got the work so laid out that nobody gets the whole picture. He's funny smart. I just happened to think about the time back east when I set off ten fires without any motive. But in order to cover one fire, it paid off a half a million dollars insurance. Boy, the arson boys thought it was the work of a firebug psycho. <laughs> Can you imagine me being taken for a psycho? <laughs> hey, don't something strike you as being funny? What do you mean? Oh, the fire sirens, I don't hear them. That store ought to be roaring like a blast furnace. It's right in the next block, and I don't see no signs of nothing. Drive down the alley. Take it easy, Pete. We're liable to be walking into something. What do you mean? What could we be walking into? We better get out of here and let well enough alone. Maybe I didn't give it enough air and it went out. I'll go see. Yeah, I'm okay. Oh? A couple of the boys in the room. Must have burned out, Joe. Some driving. I didn't drive a fire engine all those years for nothing. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> I don't understand your attitude. Here I am, an honest, respectable, tax-paying citizen, and you bring me up here and question me like a common criminal. We're only trying to determine why that fire was set in your store. Obviously the work of some maniac. He robs me, then sets my store on fire. It's a lucky thing that man happened along when he did. By the way, how is the poor fellow? He'll be all right. Well, Chief, what do you say? We have about all the information he can give us. That'll be all, Mr. Hubble. This way. If that wasn't a tip-off, then I'd say you guys are plenty lucky. Lucky? We were crazy. If only a sucker returns to the scene of the crime. Well, I had to make sure. The thing that worries me most about this job is the guy we did it for. If he talks, he can make it tough for all of us. Not as tough as you think. Don't forget, all I do is write his insurance. You know, Joe, I don't believe in luck. Luck is for the other guys, like you and Pete. There's one thing you want to remember, Joe. If you find yourself in deep water and you're going down for the third time, don't grab onto me. Don't worry, I'm a pretty good swimmer myself. 
Come on, Pete. That all you want to say to us, Mr. Fender? I'll call you when I want you. Sure, sure. You tipped off the cops to last night's caper. Oh, you're crazy. Fred, I couldn't do that. You know I couldn't. Somebody did. I can't put my finger on it. How could you ever think that? I'm sorry, baby. Come here. Pete's been making passes at you for a long time, hasn't he? That's nothing. He's a great kidder. Nevertheless, he'd jump at the chance, wouldn't he? Sure. From now on, you're going to give Pete a break. Oh, Fred, you don't... No, no. It's not what you think. I just got a little plan for cleaning house. Hello. Yeah, this is Pete. Benny, hiya, toots. Are you kidding? Would I? You bet. Yeah. He's here. Sure, why not? Okay. How's about the corner of Tenth and Hill? Say about 8.30? Be seeing it, Toots. Can you beat that here? I've been making a play for her all these months, and now it's finally beginning to pay off. Betty? Yeah, say, she's a cute dish. You're coming along, too. Who, me? Yeah, Betty says for you to come, too. You and the girlfriend. Boy, will we tie one on. Come on, let's go. Okay, Betty. <laughs> oh. This better be good, Joe. Now listen, Jane. I'm not going to mince words. I'm on an undercover job for the fire department. I have been ever since I first met you at the patients. Joe. Really? Well, I didn't know. Well, forget it, honey. Oh, Sam. The best table in the house. We'll have some drinks first, Sam. Me and the girlfriend will have the usual. I don't know about these two old people here. I'll have a ginger ale, please. Beer for me. You look more familiar every time I see you. I guess I'm just a common type. It's like I used to know you a long time ago. Say, what is this between you two? Been keeping something from me, dear? You didn't expect me to tell you everything, did you? It's best not to ask too many questions, dearie. Otherwise, they'll be asking some you can't answer. I'm sure I have nothing to hide. Oh, I'm sure you haven't, darling. That's my baby, always sharp. <laughs> How's about bringing us the bottle, Sam? Save you making all them trips. Come on, Joe, smile, have fun. All right, say something funny. Well, forget your troubles, everybody. We got a lot of serious drinking to do. Pay for a little paper. Oh, that's excuse me. Boy, and the boss said to spend it on some silly trifling bottle. <laughs> Why, it's you. What's so wonderful you got a bonus for? May I go on the fur market? That's what. I don't say anything about furs. Secrets again, huh? Well, I don't like secrets, see? And I'm going to talk about furs as much as I could. <laughs> I'm a woman. Well, I like furs. <laughs> You'd like to talk about furs with me, wouldn't you, Janie, dear? I couldn't think of a better topic. <laughs> See? What kind of furs were they? Did you get a good look at them? Well, I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I said heck of it. They're in a warehouse all boxed in cartons and... Ouch! <laughs> Watch your feet, you clumsy ox. What warehouse did you say they were in, Betty? She didn't say what warehouse they were in, Bob. I have a girlfriend who's just dying for a fur coat. <laughs> Why'd you want to know what warehouse they were in for? No reason in particular. It's just like Jane says. We've got a girlfriend who's dying for some furs. Thought maybe she could get them wholesale. Oh, yeah? Well, forget about it, see? Forget about it. 
This Disney blonde don't know what she's talking about. What do you mean, I don't know what I'm talking about? Them furs are in a warehouse down on Alvarado. 4075, to be exact. I saw the receipts myself. <laughs> and if you don't... Oh! Why, you... Easy, easy. Come on, Betty, let's dance. Wait a minute. She's gonna dance with anybody, she's gonna dance with me. How about you, Jane? I love to. What's the matter with you? You know, I kind of don't want us talking about business in front of strangers. What do we know about this dizzy school teacher? Don't give me that schmooze. What I said about the warehouse, Fred told me this night. He told you to? Yeah. He said he wanted to give the farmer a little hot foot to see which way he jumped. He said that, did he? Yeah. What did he mean by it? I wouldn't know. Honey, I'm sorry I belted you. We should have taken him home first. Pete, wake up. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him. Did you open the door? Take it easy, Pete. The cops are on their way to the warehouse. I'll take you home now. After all the hard work I did tonight? Uh-uh. You do nothing of the kind. Well, I can't take a woman to a pinch. There might be trouble. Oh, you tell them you didn't have time. I'm certainly not going to miss the payoff. What a woman. There are no furs here. Well, that's funny. This is the address you gave me. Who, some blonde? Fender's secretary. Here, see what you can do with this. What is it? Halloran's portfolio. Where'd you get it? In Pete's apartment. This proves that Pete killed Bob Halloran. Come on, boys. We're going to make a pinch. You'll find him dead drunk in his apartment. You know his address. Right. I told you there wasn't no furs here. Jane! 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 Then where you are, Joe. He's got a gun, Joe. Take the gun out of his pocket, babe. Drop it on the ground. I haven't got a gun. Don't try anything, Joe. I'll let the girl have it. That briefcase you took out of my room, give it back. You gave it to the cops, Pete. They know you killed Bob Halloran. 
Remember what Fender said about going down for the third time? Well, if I'm going down, Joe, you're going with me. Come on, start walking. This is the Los Angeles Mobile Service Operator. ZM52200. Thank you. ZM five two two oh. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, the cops are gone too. Pete's got a gun on the guy and some gal. He's taking him to the warehouse. Yeah, sure. I'll give my hand to you get here. Okay. I'll get back as fast as I can. Set the place on fire. Hey, Pete, you gotta help me. Give me a doctor. Make your choice, Joe. Me the fire.
me. The best I can do for you, Al. fighting the fire, the police were rounding up Payson, Hubble, and the other suspected members of the gang. Joe's spade work paid off and was now over. As far as he and Jane were concerned... You know, I feel kind of sorry for Pete. He was rather cute. In a grisly sort of way, yes. But let's not worry about Pete. Wait a minute. Jane? Jane, let me in. Jane, what's keeping you? I'm dying to tell you about the patients. Jane? Jane, I smell smoke. You're right, Grandma. It's us. Oh. <laughs> oh, to be young again. <laughs> 